63 AMC Rambler Ambassador 990. This is a all original survivor car. It has 22,000 original miles on it and I think it's pretty neat looking. Um, this is actually my first time seeing it. I bought this sight unseen over the phone while I was 4,000 miles away. Um, so this was my surprise when I got back and you're seeing it for the first time just like I am. Uh, uh, my, my, my nephew was working on it and cleaning it a little bit beforehand, which, you know, I didn't get that enjoyment, but nevertheless, we'll move on from that. So if you want to come on in, we'll take a tour around. So we're just going to go ahead and give a quick walk around of the vehicle. Um, like I said, this is a all original car. Nothing's been touched on it. Uh, it's got a very nice patina on the hood the rest of the car is pretty straight uh, like I said it's you know no no bondo no filler no, no nothing like that in it um, it has a couple little problem spots on it which I'm not sure if I'm going to fix or not maybe uh, maybe somebody will want it just like it is and it's all original glory um, the quarters are actually really good the rockers are really good it just has a little bit of surface rust on the inside. Again, no, no rot, no nothing. The underside looks really good. Um, this is a unibody car, actually. This car actually won Motor Trend's Car of the Year when it debuted. Uh, I think it's a very unique, interesting looking car. The problem is you can't find parts for these. Uh, just nothing, nothing exists for them. At least not that I can know. If you guys know where I can find uh, the parts for this vehicle. If you could put that down in the comments below, I'd really appreciate that. Um, if you go over here, it's got some checking in the paint and stuff, but that's just some some surface paint missing. It's got a small couple of little little rust spots there. The fuel smells like Dextane, so that tank's gonna have to come out or replaced. Um, so this is the 990 model. Interior is very nice, as you can see. Even the headliner is in great shape and not falling down. The seats are great. The uh, passenger carpet's pretty good. The driver's needs replaced. It needs some weather stripping. Uh, I don't know what happened here. I'm sure this is just UV or sun damage and. Um, Either have to make new ones of those or try to find some new old stock ones, but we'll see. In the front, like I said, it has 22,357 22, miles on it. Um, I got it from the second owner who said it's been parked since 1987. So this is going to be a revival video as well so hopefully we're gonna get under the hood and check things out and see if we can get it to start i like this engine turn finish on this dash clock radio glove bo locking glove box it's got some really neat this is you know very art deco kind of styling here um with this engine turned look to it and speedo's pretty neat looking it's got heat 
parking brake release there. I don't know what this switch is for. The seat. So cut what's that? What's that? What that's wired into? It says it's a power brake car, um, but I noticed it doesn't have a brake booster on it. So I don't know what happened there. If it got swapped out, or if it's just got the wrong. They use the same brake pad for all the cars. Maybe you can tell me that below. I don't know a whole lot about these. So let's take a look under the hood. Okay, so under here we have a AMC 327 V8. Um, not to be confused with a Chevy 327. They are not the same or interchangeable or even remotely related. It has a two-barrel Harley on it, um, which I need to look up. These also came with four barrels and four barrel intake manifolds um, if you can find one you can swap them they don't make aftermarket ones um, other than that it's all pretty clean it does it is free it does spin over we're gonna go ahead and check things out and pull the plugs out and put some oil in the cylinders and turn it over maybe do a maybe pull the distributor cap off and check our points and see what's going on back there um, like I said, the car had just a couple little, this is all nice patina here, surface rust, but has one little spot back here into the vent cowl. Um, I'm not sure what caused that, the English thing was kept inside. Um, I'm thinking maybe mice, because it also comes over here on this side. Um, that's really the biggest downside to everything on the car is, is this vent cow. But don't know what we're going to do about that yet. As you can see, I'm sinking mice because it looks like down here got a little nest below the coil. So that's my theory. But anyway, I'm going to go get some tools, check some things out, and join you back here in a little bit after we see if uh, we can get this thing started. So I went ahead and got a battery. Pull the air cleaner off, pull the sugar cap off. Our, uh, our points are pretty corroded, so I'm gonna go ahead and take some 400 grit paper and try to clean those points up and make sure we have spark. Um, and then probably go ahead and pull these plugs out and put some oil down the cylinders and make sure I got spark at the coil and spark at the uh, um, the spark plugs and that it spins over nicely and. And just try to jump, put some fuel in it, and see if we can get it started. If I need to get this in here, that's going to be a nightmare. So we've gone ahead and pulled the plugs out, put some oil in it, connected the battery up, cleaned our points, and we're just going to go ahead and dump some. A little bit of two-stroke mix in it and see if we can't get it started up. Um, I think it, as long as we got spark, it should go. Then try to fill this bowl a little bit. I disconnected the uh, fuel line from the tank, so we shouldn't be pumping any garbage into it. Our accelerator pump's not leaking yet, so that's good. All right, go ahead and hit it. Ready? Yep. That's unbelievable. 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 What? There was some black smoke going on. Oh, I'm there. sure there was. Put some more gas in it. Oh. Um, hold on a second, Frank. Don't, don't go anywhere. Headliner, the best one. I still there now. Yeah. Told you we should have drove it home, Donnie. I tried to get you to drive it home. I told you, dump some fuel in, let's go. That should be. Yeah, okay, so that's the pump thing. Alright. That shouldn't be cool anyway. Alright, go ahead and hit it. <laughs> Shorten out. 
probably. Oh, yep, there is a accelerator pump leaking. <laughs> Hit the it. Light, the lights work? Yep. All right, look at that. Hit it. Not again? Yep. Idols! Okay, so it's the next day here, and uh, I've gone ahead and rolled this inside, and I have my lovely assistant over there polishing or trying to clean up the chrome and the aluminum as best that she can. And um, it's it's obviously it's pitted and whatnot, but uh, it's really come back as far as as far as the shine that we're talking about here. It's it's much shinier than it used to be, which. Again, just a little bit of cleanup, a little bit of elbow grease. Not trying to restore it here or nothing. Just trying to make the best of what we have, which is what you should always strive to do. Unless you're taking the car apart and knocking it down 100%, you know. Um, it doesn't even take any real skill or talent to just clean stuff. Um, you know, when you clean and detail parts, and it, it gives you a much better sense of accomplishment and you really get a better idea of what you're looking at underneath. Um, it doesn't really take a whole lot of skill to learn how to clean stuff and make them the best that they can. Uh, went to my parts store today and they pretty much laughed at me. Um, nothing is available for this uh, this car or this engine anywhere locally or order. I got a couple things ordered but I couldn't even get a rebuild kit for that for that holly. I mean, it's a 2300 holly and I couldn't even get a rebuild kit for that. So, um, coil on order, plug wires on order, plugs on order, all of it was special order. Uh, gonna try to track down a water pump and a radiator. Um, I did order a fuel pump, but I noticed that it said it was with electric windows and this has a vacuum operated window, uh, or vacuum operated, uh, windshield wiper. I said window, sorry, uh, windshield wipers. Um, and that vacuum is plumbed right into the top of the top of the fuel pump there. So I'm pretty sure that, that fuel pump's not going to work for me anyway. Um, so I'll probably just send that back whenever it gets in. Uh, other than that, brake master needs replaced. Uh, check that the the brake pedal is completely solid on it and locked up. So um, that's pretty much indicative of a froze up master cylinder that the piston doesn't even want to move inside of it so this right here figured out is actually a garage door opener from like the late 60s uh, this whole module here is a frequency electronic frequency transmitter and it's wired into that switch underneath the dash that switch on the dash is for um, super weird super neat little unit no idea if it's worth anything I, i'm not going to keep it on the car um so it's just it's kind of a shame because it's it's just screwed in there with some flathead screws so there's going to be some holes there where where that was but super eyeball piece i don't know maybe i'll keep it on there just for a conversation piece and just take the wiring off of it who knows but that's about up to speed right now um gonna go ahead and I have a Holly 2300 off of the Fairlane that I might try to swap on here and see if I can run this thing off of a off a fuel can for a little bit just to see if I can get it to idle and change the oil. I, I couldn't even find an oil filter for this today. That's how that's how crazy it is. So we'll catch back up with you here in a little bit. And welcome back. It's been a little while here. We've fast forward a little bit. Um, I just wanted to bring you up to speed on what's going on. To before I get way too far ahead of myself because I realize I've been working a lot and getting a lot of things done and not necessarily taking the time to document them. So we've gone ahead and obviously we pulled it inside. I got it tuned up a little bit. It was clear that it needed a little bit of work. Um, and yeah, now we're here. So I've gone ahead and pulled most of the motor apart uh, in preparation for getting it out. It was leaking really bad out of the rear main and uh, the valve covers and um, I wasn't going to tear it down this far but I started with going and replacing the fuel pump and I reached in and there was about a half inch of slop in the timing chain 
and I noticed it also had a nylon gear in it. So I went ahead and ordered the correct parts for that, and while I was at it, I decided, well, I might as well order a gasket kit, take a look at this thing, clean it up, give it a fresh paint job, you know, exactly the opposite of what I said I was going to do, but here we are. Um, I also found that uh, right over there, there's a little rust spot in the core support, and that needs to be patched, so having the engine out of here, I can go ahead and clean all this up, shoot some paint in here, uh, whether it be a flat black or factory color or something, I don't know, I haven't decided yet. Um, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So yeah, a little further along, a little more crazy than I expected, but that's where we're at. Uh, haven't done much else with it. Went ahead and pulled the seats out. Pulled the seats out for the rear and the front seats out. I wanted to get a look at the floors, uh, which I tell you, fellas, this is this is just fantastic. I mean, this floor looks factory fresh. Uh, maybe not quite factory fresh, but you get what I'm saying. There isn't a speck of rust to be found in this floor. Uh, I had a little bit of leftover time mat from another project, so um, I went ahead and after I pulled the carpet out, which most of it just tore, it was all dry rotted and uh, whatnot, I degreased the whole floor, cleaned it up, and I had a little bit of dynamat, so I threw it in there. I actually went ahead and ordered some more. I'm going to go ahead and just do the whole thing. Put a fresh carpet kit in it. Go ahead and put put some new door seals on it. They are, as you can see, the door seals are completely perished. So, uh, got new door seals coming. Got new wind lace coming. Got new carpet coming. Going to go ahead and put the carpet in, put the wind lace on, put the door seals on, throw the interior back in it, and say that that is 85% done, and go ahead and start working on the exterior and things like that. Oh, almost forgot. Went ahead and pulled the fuel tank out, because I knew it was full of old gas, and not only was it full of old gas, it was full of rust, and there, when I went to clean it out, there were pinholes in the top corner, so... The tank is shot. Uh, can't get a replacement. Nobody makes a new one. So I'm either going to send it out somewhere and get it redone, the tank renew process, or I'm going to try to buy a universal tank and fit it up under there. It's, it's a square area. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet, but we'll see. Probably going to send it out, but it's only a few hundred dollars to have it fixed. Hopefully, uh, that might be the most cost-effective option. But if you want to look in here, you can see that this is actually uh, really nice in here. Um, there's there's still some cross-hatching on the cylinder walls. Uh, really not anything scary. Pistons are even pretty clean, given the circumstances. All the lifters are free. Nothing's stuck. Uh, no bent push rods, nothing nothing funny going on there. Trying to decide whether or not uh, I'm going to pull the cam out and send it out and have it reground. I haven't decided that yet. And the reason that the cylinder head came off is because I had to get the starter out to pull the motor out. In order to get the starter out, it's got a bolt all the way in the back corner down here. And the exhaust manifold has to come off in order to get to that. Uh, pretty insane design, but there was no way the exhaust manifold was coming out in the car. I didn't have any room to work on it uh, or get anything. And in the first bolt, I tried to take out just rounded the head right off because, of course, it did. So I said, well, pull the cylinder head, exhaust manifold will come out with it, and I can take it off when it's off the car. Um, so once again, just you just start digging and you start digging and you start digging and uh, eventually you gotta put the shovel down, but that's how these things become, go from a couple day project into a year or two long project, so anyway, just wanted to give you a quick update, uh, hope you enjoy what we're having going on so far, and we'll catch you next time here on Wheels Forgotten.